everybody, thanks for watching. Really exciting time right now to have Tim Yelverton in from Mississippi. Hi, Tim. How's it going? Good to be here. Uh, Tim just got off the plane about two hours ago. Fancy dinner, and then straight over here. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, so today we're going to be playing on this video. It's going to be a playing vlog. Nine holes here at Hartwell Golf Course. This course was uh, became famous because this was where Tiger Woods learned how to play golf. Tim, you're coming here for to do two things. Yeah. Tell people about the, the two uh, cool things that we're doing this weekend. Well, uh, we're in town tomorrow for the uh, to shoot the video for the putting. Uh, we really don't even have a title yet, I guess, yeah, right. for the for the for the putting video. But it's gonna be really cool. Really look extensive looking, putting. Video yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh -huh. gonna be really cool. Um, and then after that, on Saturday, you know, we're gonna have another short game scoring school. Be better golf uh, short game scoring school on Saturday, at Saturday Hills, morning yeah. at Industry Hills, and Saturday afternoon also. Mm -hmm. So so busy. The next forty eight hours are gonna be really busy. Um, but so I'm ready to get started. We'll talk about it as we get into it. Let's let's play golf. All right, Tim, talk us through what you have here. What what the shot looks like? Yeah, so uh, we, back right. So we shot it at 1:30, mm -hmm. which would normally be a full wedge. But since I just got off the plane, first shot of the night, we'll try to hit a little easy nine iron. Uh, I think right at the uh, at the green light. Yeah. I think there in the background. So here we go. Is that it? Maybe a little short? Yeah, is it 10 or 15 feet right of the hole? Maybe just a touch short? All right, Tim's ball's there. He landed. Uh, where did you land, Tim? All the way up here? Uh, I think, I'm not sure if this is, yeah, I think He's this one may of be these, my and He landed and spun back to there. Either on this the one or this putting. one here. Step or two on and then spun back just a little. And that's me a little long left. The greens look pretty good. Yeah, they, yeah, they usually keep it in pretty good shape here. Tim for birdie. Look at that putting stroke. Very good, good par. When you're going to play a course and it's the first time you've really been there or even if it's you're just, when you're setting up to the course and you want to kind of calibrate yeah. Like to know how hard to hit putts and stuff. Right. What's a good routine to actually putting wise I like to get to, into? You know, when you have time to go on the putting green and actually hit putts, I like to always go to about a 20 footer that's pretty flat and just kind of use that as a baseline distance. So go on the putting green, hit a few 20 footers, just kind of get the feel for how hard you need to hit it. Um, you know, as you and I were talking about with time, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of people kind of getting their internal clock set to how long it should take the ball to get to the hole from 20 feet. And then that sort of helps them with green reading and their touch as well. Whoa, they hit the brakes at the end there. Okay. Yeah, it came off left. Darn. All right, bogey for me, par for Tim. 127. Okay. I feel like the wind's not straight in our face as much anymore. It's swirling because that was kind of hurting before. Now it's. Feels like it's a touch of that our flag back. there is going this way. Yeah. Maybe I'm loose enough to hit a wedge now, since that's more normal. Okay. Now it's a red flag, Tim. Will you is like? That front? Does that mean front? That means front, yeah. So will you try to err towards the long side there? Or? Um, depending on you know, depending on what's behind it. Here, obviously, there's nothing in front, so short's okay. Okay. And it looks like you got a little bit of some pitch from back to front, so I wouldn't want to go long here, and and be kind of chipping back downhill. So I'm gonna go with wedge and normally this would be plenty of club. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is a, a normal wedge. Yeah, okay. 127 is pretty, pretty, pretty easy, comfortable wedge.
little left. Now for you, Tim, when you try to swing harder, does it go more left? Uh, normally, my tendency is, um, my, when I swing harder, I'd say my, my head goes down a little bit, so I kind of get st stuck a little inside. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you know, I'll either hit a push or an overdraw. They're usually the two shots that I kind of fight the most. Go. Good line. All right. I'm not sure if it quite got up there, but it's pretty good. Tell us a little bit about teaching wise, business wise, what you've been up to this year, like who you've been working with and yeah. um, some of the things that have been going on with you. Yeah, you know, it's, you. It's, it's been a busy year between, uh, we have, um, my partner VJ Trollio and I, we've, we've got three players on the web.com tour and then uh, We've got a Jonathan Randolph on the PGA Tour, Ally McDonald on the LPGA Tour. Mm -hmm. um, got a couple other players that I've just started working with. So, you know, it's been a busy year there. And then the junior players, college players, you know, we got probably, I don't know, 15 or 20. College. 15 or 20 college golfers. Yeah, but, you know, wow. um, just kind of spread out. Now, is that the type of thing that... different? schools do the schools in season pay you or this is directly yeah, no, from yeah. the players with ncaa rules it has to come directly from the student yeah the, okay okay the, right because uh, that would be like being paid to play right. then yeah. <clears throat> yeah the schools are not allowed to do anything and we have to you know charge them full price and we can't make certain deals for them that we wouldn't make for anyone right. anyone else you right. know well, I appreciate you missing this green because if you came out here and hit all nine greens, I mean, what's the point of having the short game man <laughs> That's here? That's right. So we want to see. So, so walk us through this shot, Tim. Tell us. Okay. Well, if we can't see on camera, tell us what's yeah. in front of you and then how you're going to deal with yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, the first thing I'm always going to do anytime I'm, I have a short game shot is, is assess the lie. Now this lie, we're on an upslope. The ball is actually, it's sitting, it's, it's not really sitting up, but it's okay. Um, so I'm on a little bit of an upslope, pretty standard lie, um, tons of pitch from left to right. So this ball is going to break pretty good. And then it's a little bit downhill. Now, um, Tim, because that, that ball is on an upslope a little bit, how's that going to change your setup? Yeah. So I'm just going to put a little, you know, I need to shallow my strike just a little bit. So I'm gonna have a little bit more weight on my back foot than I normally would for a flat lie. And so I can just kind of kind of accommodate my angle of attack into the ball and you know, I can kind of match it up with a slope. So here. it's less than mostly we hear teachers talking about like matching your shoulders to the slope. Yeah. You think more of like get the weight right and then the shoulders. Will, yeah. Will... You know how in the, in the past with our videos, we've talked about landing an airplane. Yeah. Um, and really that's what we're trying to do here is we're just trying to have a nice smooth landing and you just want to swing a little bit more down than whatever slope you have. You know, so here we got a little bit of an upslope. So I'm gonna put a, a little less, uh, a little less weight on my front foot. Actually, probably about 60-40 here on my back foot. And then, as far as landing spot and trajectory, I think kind of medium height landed a, a step or two on the green. Okay. And it should from there just kind of roll out nicely, I think. Yeah, just like that. It just didn't curve to the right like you thought it would. Yeah, I gave it a little more break than it really needed. The strike was good. I hit my spot and the distance was pretty good. So mm -hmm. just played a little too much break. So in the short game scoring system, which you guys can get through the link that pops up in the corner right now, talk a little bit about anticipation and how you might hit that shot again and why the good players, are, the great players are so great. Yeah, you know, we talk about that the, in the, the two ball, that two ball game, ball one versus ball two, you know, really, the, the reason I have a six footer, seven footer here for, for par really has nothing to do with the actual skill or the execution of the shot, but it's much more about the anticipation of the shot. Okay. Um, if I hit it over again, I would probably play a little less break and then I might open the club face just a little bit more because the ball hit a little bit firmer than I expected it to when it landed and it rolled out just a 
Because you were pads. saying on on tour, like all the guys have good short games. Like you, you just <laughs> yeah, for the most, for the most part, part. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's not nearly as much about contact with those guys as it is more about anticipating the shot. So the best of the best are yeah, figuring out can, how how yeah. the the club's going to interact with the turf and then how the ball is going to interact with the with the green when it lands. Okay. So go ahead and knock this birdie in and All right. We'll get it back to even. High side. Oh, oh you dog. Oh, goodness. I thought I slow curled it in on the top. Yeah, that was a really nice putt. Good putt, though. That was, a, that was a nice putt there. Thought you had that one. Pretty good bit of break here, I believe. Had to get it a few inches out. Ah. Ooh. Nice putt. Just didn't quite break. Nope. Same thing as the chip, just didn't come down as much I'm as it looked. Convinced it's gonna break more. One thing, Tim, that you ha you told me to do last uh, last time we played the course that I went through, uh, went ahead and did. You guys can see, I put all these notes here. Oh yeah. So here we yeah. got belly button is 50 yards. Yep. Nipple is 75 yards. My ear is 90, and full is 100. Okay, so you've actually got four for every way. That's good. Yeah. Well, just I went to one of those places that had it in one of those indoor places and kind of yeah did that. And if I keep my tempo the same, yeah, you know, like we talk about in the short game. If I keep my tempo the same, but then vary the lengths, that then solid strikes should go there. And it's made a huge difference on approach shots like this. Like this is 85, so I know that's just like a little below my ear for me. Right. Is that what but you yeah, do usually? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You're keeping keeping tempo the same and just adjusting the length of the backstroke, which then gives you a different club head speed for each of those. Uh, for those four yardages. Yeah, I haven't done it to my 60, which I need to, but. Softly, yep. Yeah, this is good. Just pulled it a little bit. I slowed down a little bit on the way down. Yeah, more often than not, when players are in between, you know, they'll hit a little bit more of a pull than a push. They just kind of slow the body down. Okay. Arms, arms have a tendency to kind of go past their body a little, a little more. So you on the on the half and the three quarter shots, you'll usually see players hit a little bit more of a uh, of a pull than a push. Oh, great shot. Okay, disappeared. Now, Tim, do you do the type of thing where, like, we're talking about, like, par fives or when you're forced to lay up or something like that. What's your favorite yardage that you usually will try to get to? Uh, depending on the flag. If I've got a little bit of space to take a hop or two and then check, uh -huh. I really like 90 to 95. Okay. Which is kind of my, I have... And you'll try to hit a little lower. Yeah, yeah. with a 54, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just call them half, three-quarter full. Okay. Um, and so that's kind of my, my three-quarter uh, sandwich. Now, if, if it's a front flag and I had, say, 90 yards, then I'm going to hit more of a full lob wedge. Um, Which will be how, how far? Uh, 90 is comfortable full. 95 is... Oh, so it's still the same yardage. You're yeah. just the trajectory on those two shots are different. Right, right. Oh, so okay. if it's a front flag from say 90 to 95 yards, I'm gonna hit 58. But if it's a middle flag, I would probably go with 54. Okay. And then let it take a hop or two, and then stop. <clears throat> Generally speaking, I like to swing the wedges a little softer. I'm not trying to. See so how, effort, to see effort wise in your body for a full wedge shot what would you say your your effort level is as far as like are you swinging a hundred percent are you swinging 70 percent what would you what does the effort feel like to you um maybe 85 85 to 90 percent for full 
okay. like really hard, yeah. you know? And then with like a seven iron, what does it feel like for you? Uh, pushing more around, more around? say 90, 95. You know, okay, dry. gotcha. If, if a, I guess if a full driver is 100%, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that because a lot of traditional golf instruction, wisdom, whatever, said like, oh, you know, the good players are only swinging their their driver 80% effort and and which is uh I have, yeah I is would. disproven because in one way uh Monty had said to me well you can look at somebody's average drive uh club head speed and then their their biggest of the year and it's like a 2% difference yeah, so it's not very they're cool. swinging their driver pretty darn hard yeah. yeah yeah the tour's changed a lot i mean players players now hit it as they try to hit it as far as they can and and then they go find it, and, and, and yeah, they're okay. They're okay with missing a, an extra couple fairways if they can hit it, you know, 20 yards farther, and uh, give themselves some more wedges, and then try to make some putts. Cause it's making some birdies for sure. It'll be it's hard good. to improve on that one, uh -oh. Tim. Might be hard to improve on that. I think you've played here before. Nice spot. Yeah, a couple times. <laughs> nice spot. Although I do notice it is, you play here at night, it is hard to make putts, boy. Woo. Just lumpity and bumpity. Oh, it left. All right, so Tim, this is the length of putt you have here is what everybody never worries about until the club championship comes up. <laughs> And yeah. then, and then, like I just followed the Long Beach City Championship. My friend was playing in the B flight, and the guys were playing all right. Nobody could make this length of putt. They were missing these, and they would. It always seemed like they would take it way too nonchalantly. Like, oh, let me just knock this in. Almost like yeah. they were nervous to hit it, so they yeah. just quick hit it. Well, a lot of times, I mean, most of the time, you know, when you're playing with your buddies, you just kind of rake these. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden, it comes tournament time, and now you have to put putt them out, and you're doing something you haven't really done in quite a while so then so you get a little a little cautious um some players when they get uncomfortable play faster so when some somebody is, like down. comes to you and they're saying like i'm having such a hard time with my four footers or yeah i mean just try just trying to keep their i always want the player's body to be real stable but but keep their eyes still too you know okay. so so i i use the pro v1 the line to look to line up putts so yeah. here on the back of the little arrow I just I'm gonna watch the back the the very back of the line and uh, just try to keep my eyes nice and quiet through the stroke, not jumping around from the t place to place. It's bouncing all over the place. No, there's it's that's why I say playing here at night. Uh,